Hello there and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle Ferre and I am a fourth grade teacher in Maryland. For anyone who doesn't know, I am teaching my students virtually until further notice. One of the best decisions I have made thus far with virtual teaching is using Nearpod to teach all of my lessons. If you haven't used Nearpod, it's essentially an interactive slideshow. Students will join in either using a link or a code and then you as the teacher can control the pace of the lesson. So every time you advance to the next slide, it also changes on the students' devices. Then you can add in interactive elements where maybe they have to type or maybe they draw on the screen or they play a game or they watch a video. And for me, that has really helped keep my students engaged while I'm teaching and it's helped my lessons flow a lot smoother. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I create a Nearpod lesson from start to finish. Now I just want to start by saying this is not a full in-depth Nearpod tutorial. I'm really just showing you all how I am utilizing it. There are definitely more features that you can explore within Nearpod, but hopefully this at least will get you started. I actually begin my Nearpod lessons within Google Slides. So currently I just have a pre-made set of slides that I had used for a science lesson. What I'm going to do is show you how to add those interactive Nearpod elements to slides that I've already created. Within my slides, in order to open up Nearpod, I'm going to go to add-ons and then Nearpod. If you do not already have Nearpod installed, you're gonna come down to get add-ons. In the search box, you will type in Nearpod, go ahead and select it and then choose install. It's gonna ask for permission, just click continue. You can go ahead and select your Google account click allow, <laughs> and then it will just take a few seconds to actually install. I'm gonna click done and close out of there. So now I'm gonna go back to add-ons, go to Nearpod and choose open Nearpod. This is going to open up a little sidebar on the right-hand side, and this is going to allow me to add those interactive Nearpod elements. So I'm gonna kind of go through my lesson and just talk through how I decide what elements to add. So first I have my essential question and my I can statement. I don't really need to add anything for that. Next, I'm going over some vocabulary and I really like to utilize matching activities with vocabulary. So after this slide, I'm gonna go ahead and add in a matching pairs activity. So I'm just gonna click matching pairs and it's going to pop up and ask me to type in any instructions. So I'm just going to say, match the vocabulary word to the correct definition. Then I'm gonna go ahead and start adding in my pairs. So I'm gonna add the word on one side and the definition on the other. My first word was structure, and I can say a part of something, click add another pair, then I had function, what something does or its purpose, add another pair, diagram, a picture with labels that makes something easier to understand. Then I had internal, which was the inside part, and external, which was the outside part. Then I'll go ahead and click done. I'm gonna just check over, make sure everything's spelled correctly and I have everything I need. It looks pretty good. Then I have the option to add a timer. Maybe I want my students to have two minutes to complete this. I can click add. That way it will automatically stop students after two minutes. I really like that feature because sometimes if you wait too long, you end up getting behind in your lesson. And I feel like the timer really keeps me on track. So I'm gonna click save. And this is now going to add itself as an additional slide within my slideshow. It will initially show up as white, but after a few seconds it will load and you'll be able to see those different matching pairs that you added in. Perfect. So now I'm gonna come down to my next slide. What do we wonder? So this is where I kind of wanna gauge what are my students already wondering about today's lesson. So for this, I might do a collaborate board. This is like online sticky notes. It's kind of like Google Jamboard, but students can add in their thoughts. So I might say, what are you wondering about flower structures and functions? Okay, 
um, I ran out of space to put a question mark. So I'm gonna change that to a question or to an and sign and then add the question mark. You can choose the style. I really like the cork board. I tend to always go with that. You can add in an image if you want, but for now I feel like that's not really necessary. So I'm just gonna click save and then it's going to pop it in again as an additional slide. It will show up as white, but it will then load and put in what it will actually look like. All right, so now I'm just gonna continue that process. I then have some questions that I am going to ask my students. Maybe this go around instead of a collaborate board, which allows students to see the responses of their classmates, I'm just gonna make it an open-ended question. I'm going to make it something that they will just submit a response for and then I can see their responses and share them out if needed. So I'm gonna add open-ended question. And for this, I might say, what do you notice about the flowers? Ooh, but I would really like to have a picture of the flowers. So I'm gonna actually cancel out of here. Yes, I wanna cancel. And I'm gonna take a screenshot of the flower images that I already added into this slide. So I'm just going to screenshot this little area which on a MacBook, it's Command Shift 4, and then you can just click and drag the area. But on a PC, you can use the Snippet tool, and again, you can just draw out that area. So now I'm gonna go back to open-ended question, and I'm gonna type it, what do you notice about the flowers? And I will also add a timer for this. Maybe I'll give them two and a half minutes this go around. Click Add, and I'm gonna come over to Add Media, choose Image, and I want to Upload. So I'm gonna find that little screenshot that I took and click open. This way students will be able to click on that picture and it will open it up full screen so they can look at it really close up. And if I want to, I can enable student audio recording so they could record the response instead of just typing it. And I will click save. And again, this is going to add itself as an additional slide. Now, in order to save time, I would continue doing this for these other questions. So then what questions do you have about the flowers? What parts do you think flowers have? But for now, I'm just gonna keep going because you all get the point. Next, I say we're gonna explore a diagram of a flower, pay close attention to the different parts. I already put that image in there, so that looks pretty good. Okay, let's watch a video. So I did not insert the video in. I wanna insert the video through Nearpod because that will allow me to push it out onto student devices and I can even add interactive questions. So let me show you how that works. I'm gonna come down to video and Nearpod actually already has a selection of videos. So I can start by just searching that. So I'm gonna search flowers and see what comes up. Okay, ooh, parts of a plant. Okay, that might work. Let me go ahead and open this and view it. There are lots of different plants. What do they all have in common? Okay, this video actually looks pretty decent for what I need it for. And as you can see, there are already these interactive elements added in. So there are these questions. And what do you notice? Uh, multiple choice, why are they brightly colored? Perfect, because we wanna really focus on the petals, um, the seeds and the fruit. Okay, so this one looks pretty good as is. If I wanted to add an additional question, I just click wherever I want the video to stop. I click add activity and I can choose an open-ended question or multiple choice, but what I already have looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna click save. And again, this is going to add itself as an additional slide. When I actually push this out to students, if I choose for them to play it on their own device, it will only play that segment of the video. And then once my students have finished, I usually tell them just to give me a thumbs up. I can then push out that question, whether it's something they're gonna type or multiple choice, they'll all answer it. I can see their responses and then I'll have them continue playing the video so once again I am in control as the teacher okay so I added that video then I maybe want to know what my students have learned so I can add in this would be a fun chance to have a little game so I really like time to climb it's an interactive game they can see each other like moving up the hill it's really really cute all you have to do is type in your question so I'm just gonna add like two as an example so why do flowers have brightly colored petals and I can say to produce food for the flower, to attract insects, and let's maybe say to transport water through the flower. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and select the correct 
choice, which is to attract insects. I can add a reference image if I want. I also can change the time, but I feel like 30 seconds is pretty good. So I'm gonna leave that as is. Then I can add another question. What is the function of the leaves? So to produce food for the flower, and that's the correct answer, to pollinate the flower or to transport water. Okay, that's good enough. I'm gonna go ahead and click save. So this is going to look like an interactive game, but you won't actually see all of the questions until you run the game with your students. That's looking pretty good. Then I might go ahead and add in a poll, maybe figure out how my students are feeling. So I'm gonna go to poll and I'm going to choose, how do you feel about flower structures and their functions? I'm a pro, I need more practice or what's a structure? <laughs> and then I'll go ahead and add a timer. So once again, just 30 seconds for them to answer and click save. Again, that's gonna add itself as an additional slide. Then I would have the little blurb about their independent practice and I always tell them they can then close out of Nearpod. So as you can see, there are a lot more options that I didn't even go over. I can add in audio clips. I can have a draw it. I do kind of want to show you all how that works though. So let me come up to this slide with the flower diagram. Let's say for some reason I wanted my students to actually draw on this slide. I can actually click convert to draw it. It's going to take this exact slide and it's going to allow students to either draw on the screen, add text boxes, add other images, and it's a really interactive way for them to get their thoughts out. And I love that it's differentiated because they can choose drawing or they can choose typing. Obviously for this lesson, I might not necessarily need them to do that, but I like to use it a lot for math. I'll actually put a problem on the screen and I'll convert it to a draw it so that my students can solve it directly on the screen. You'll notice this created an additional slide. So I don't really need that initial slide anymore unless I wanna leave it there so I can kind of explain to students like, hey, on the next slide, you're gonna be able to draw and here's what I want you to do. I'll just go ahead and leave it in there then for directions, you know functions, <laughs> but there's other things like a virtual field trip. I can do fill in the blank, different 3D options. Maybe I'm going to search and see, is there a flower that my students could look at as a 3D? There might not be. Um, let's see. There's a plant cell, but otherwise I'm not really seeing a flower. So just double check and see some of those elements might go well with your lesson. Um, you can have them do a simulation. You can have them view PDFs. Like there are so many other options that I'm not even showing you. I just kind of wanted to show you some of the features. Once I am done adding all of those interactive Nearpod elements, I'm gonna click save and go to Nearpod. This is going to automatically open up Nearpod in a new tab, and it's going to save that set of slides to my library. And it will take a minute or two, depending on how many slides you actually have. So now it has fully loaded in Nearpod. I can see a little preview of it. One suggestion I will give you, as you start adding lessons, it's gonna fill up your library and it can be kind of difficult to find what you need. So I actually come up to new and I choose folder. I've actually created a different folder for each subject area. So this one would be science, click create. And now if I go back to my lessons, I'll have that science folder. I can actually click and drag and put it into my science folder so it's easier to use. Now, when it comes to actually running this lesson with my students, all you're gonna do is click teach and then I choose live participation. I would love to do live plus Zoom, but we use Google Meet. So I choose live participation. Once it starts running, it will open up Nearpod in a new tab and it's going to automatically pop up with a code. You can have your students go to join.nearpod and type in the code, but personally, I end up coming down to link and then I just copy and paste that link directly into the chat and my students click on it and they join in. When they join in, it's going to prompt them to give their name. And I always tell my students, it's fine if you wanna put a nickname, but your name needs to be part of it so I know who you are. And then there's usually an other box and I tell them just to leave that blank. They don't need to put anything there. As your students join in, you will see their names popping up on the screen. Once you're ready to go ahead and proceed with the lesson, just click your slide will pop up, it will automatically pop up on all of their screens, and as you go through the lesson and you change the slides, it will show up on their screens as well. 
I do want to quickly show you some of the interactive elements. So for example, this matching activity, I can quickly give the directions to students, but they will not be able to actually complete the activity until I click start activity on my screen. Once I click start activity, it will count down on their screen and they will be able to complete that matching activity. I'll be able to see how many matches they've gotten correct and how many tries it has taken them. So I can see if they got them all in the first try or if they had to click several times and I can use that data in order to drive my instruction. Then I can continue going on. For the collaborate board, it's going to ask me if I want to approve student responses before they go up and I always, always, always choose that because sometimes my students just put ridiculous things on there because they're kids. So I always click yes and if I have multiple collaborate boards, I do go ahead and click apply for the rest of the session. So once I click yes, as students start submitting their responses, I will see them appear right here under pending posts. And if I want to approve it, I'll just click the check. And if I don't want to approve it because it's not on task, I click the X and it will not show up. As the responses start popping up on the screen, they can heart each other's and you can choose to organize it by the time it's posted or by the number of likes. So if a post gets more likes, it will move up to the top. Then as I continue going on, Here's what the individual open-ended question will look like. Again, you can explain it before you actually start it. Once you start it, they will have that time limit to go ahead and submit their responses, and you will see a list of student answers as they submit them. Then you have the ability to actually share those out, which means if you share it, it will show up on every student's screen. So you can share out responses and talk about them as a class. You can choose to have student names appear with them or to hide student names, which is what I always choose. And I'll just say, hey, this student said, and that way, Sometimes I can use responses that maybe needed more detail and we can use that as a discussion point, but that student doesn't feel embarrassed. I'm gonna keep clicking through just so you can see some of the other slides. So the diagram, okay, I said I was gonna give directions about this. And then for draw it, you will actually be able to see in real time what students are working on, but you can't share them out unless a student has actually submitted. So I always remind my students, please submit when you're done, that way Miss Bray can share it out with the class. But same thing, if I do share it out, it will pop up on every student's screen. So it makes it really great for holding those discussions. Then for the video, you will get the option to either have it play on all devices or this device only. I always choose all devices since I'm teaching my students remotely. If you choose this device only, it's going to pop up on student screens and tell them to look at your screen. But obviously if you're not, if you're not in person with them, you're not gonna be able to actually play the video. If you're sharing your screen through Google Meet, you could certainly play it through there, but I know personally videos have been very laggy on Google Meet, so that's not my favorite. I'm gonna choose all devices. And once I actually start playing it, Students will have the ability to start playing it on their device. Once it gets to this activity, let me just Head show you, five. a little box is gonna pop up and it's gonna ask you when you're ready to start the activity. So I tell my students, give me a thumbs up when you've watched that part. I wait until I have like almost all the students with their thumbs up and then I will click start activity and that will push out the question to their devices. After they've all answered, I will go ahead and hit the play button in order to continue to the next section and it will pop up on their screens to continue as well. So here's what time to climb looks like. On my screen, I can choose which theme I want. So the Himalaya, space or underwater, and I kind of mix it up. You can choose if you want them to have sound or if you want it to randomize the answers and then click continue. On their screen, they're gonna be able to choose their character. So they have different like animals and things that they can choose from. Once they choose it and they click submit or start or something, I don't know, it's a little bar down at the bottom, their characters will start popping up on the screen and it will tell you how many are connected. So you wanna make sure you don't start the activity until all of your students have connected. Once you're ready to start, you will just click the start button down at the bottom. For the poll, again, they won't be able to do it until you click start. It will start counting down on their screen. And after students have all answered it, you will be able to share out the results over here. So it will put a pie graph on everyone's screen and they'll be able to see how other students voted, at least like the percentages, not the actual students, if that makes sense. 
And then finally, I always end with a slide that tells them what we're doing next, which is typically something on Google Classroom. And I tell them that they can close out of Nearpod. Now, when I'm done running this session, I will come up to the top, I will choose end session. And if I click yes, if students haven't left the Nearpod, it's gonna pop up on their screen and say, your teacher has now ended the session. They click okay and it kicks them out of it. What I love is you can then look at the reports afterwards so you can still see all of those student responses even after you end the session. So that's it, that's how I've been using Nearpod. I did share in last week's vlog how I actually joined into Nearpod. I use my personal laptop in order to run the Nearpod and then I join in as a student on my iPad and I share that screen to Google Meet so that my students will see what it looks like on my end. I will say sometimes there are technical difficulties and my students will say, oh, Nearpod kicked me out or, oh, the video wasn't working. And when that happens, I just tell my students to look on Google Meet because I'm sharing the student version. So that way they can still participate and see what's going on, even though they're having technical difficulties. That's just what's worked for me, but I would love to hear from you all. If you are using Nearpod, do you have any tips or tricks? Or if you haven't used it yet, how are you thinking about using it? Personally, I'm using it to teach math, science, and social studies, and I love it. If this video was helpful, for you please give it a thumbs up share it out with your teacher friends if you think they would also enjoy it go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos as always thank you for watching i love you all so much don't forget to put your positive pants on and i will catch you in the next one